I've always liked Francesco Bernoulli's role in the Cars 2 movie. He's the main racing rival to Lightning McQueen, but he's definitely not as mean and bitter as Chick Hicks was in the original Cars movie. He's a lot nicer to McQueen, and by the end of the movie, they're both friends. And that's what I really do like about Francesco, so just maybe Maybe he'll appear in some way, shape, or form in Cars 3. I'd really love to see him in that movie. So I am very, very happy to be reviewing all of the variations of Francesco Bernoulli. Thank you very much for the suggestion, Abigail Mater. I really do appreciate it, and I hope you enjoy this video. And if any of you out there would like to make a suggestion or a birthday request of your own, Feel free to do so, just please watch the video in the description below, there's a link to it, and in about 11 minutes or so you'll know how to make a proper suggestion. Thank you very much for watching that video, it really means a lot to me, it saves me a lot of time if you make proper suggestions. So without any further ado, let's go with the review of all the variations of Francesco Bernoulli. Now, Mattel has made quite a few variations of Francesco Bernoulli and unfortunately I guess I really shouldn't say all of the variations because I will not be reviewing all of them in this video. There are a couple that I do not have unfortunately, one of which is the Color Changers version of him. It was released in 2011, I never bought it and nowadays it's very, very rare. There aren't any on eBay, but thankfully, thank Mattel here, he was re-released just recently as a color changer in the 2016 line. It has only been found in Australia and Canada, I believe so far, maybe in Europe somewhere as well, but it has not hit the United States yet. The other variation of Mr. Bernoulli that has been officially released, but I do not have, is the lights and sounds version. It was released in 2011, but I never bought it. Back then, I really only focused on the main line. I didn't buy cars from other lines, such as the lights and sounds line, so I'm sorry about that, but it really just has some cool phrases and lights up a little bit, so it's not a huge deal to show, but maybe in the future, I'll find a good deal for it buy it, and then I'll review it on my channel. But for now, we'll just have to do with the eight variations of Francesco I have for today in this video. Now, before we move into the review of the variations of Francesco, I have to address this one thing. You may be wondering, what about the Carbon Racer version of Francesco? Well, that has not been officially released just yet. It should be out in stores very, very soon, or at least I hope so. He will be in the second wave of Carbon Racers. The second wave of Carnival Racers actually hit stores in Australia last month, but the second wave of Carbon Racers has yet to hit stores anywhere yet. So I really do hope it's not canceled. I don't think it is because quite a few of Carbon Racer Francesco were available on eBay from China. Actually, there still might be some on eBay right now. Not entirely sure though. They probably go for around 10 to $15. Not a bad deal, but I'm going to wait for them to come on Amazon or I find them in a store. But for now though, we can enjoy the Disney Store version of Carbon Racer Francesco. It's actually a very, very well done car. If you'd like to see my review of him, you can check out the description below. There's a link to my review of this version right here. All right, on to Francesco Bernoulli himself now. Here we have the original World Grand Prix version of him. It was originally released in 2011, and since then, he has been re-released countless times in multi-packs, two-packs, singles, etc. He is not a rare car at all, but he has evolved a little bit since his original release. In 2011, up until about 2012, 
he had a completely white base as you can see. The entire base was white. But in 2013 he evolved to having a black base for the most part. As you can see now, instead of being white in this area, it is now black. This portion remained white, but as you can clearly see, a huge difference in the base there. So really though, in the grand scheme of things, this is not a big difference at all, but I did want to mention it in this review of the variations of Francesco because we are reviewing all the variations of Francesco, although I don't really consider this a full-on variation of Francesco because it really just is a minor kind of production change in the run of Francesco Bernoulli. And now let's go through each individual detail on Francesco. He is number one as you can see on the hood there and there is the Italian flag that is the country that Francesco represents. He has Rotelli tires with red rims. Rotelli is like the light year of Italy, I would assume. We can see the World Grand Prix emblem there along with the Italian flag. And number one, FR, which is some sort of racing league I believe Francesco is a part of. And all in all below that. He does have his signature on either side of his face, I guess you could say, which is similar to McQueen having his signature on both roof edges. There's also a very, very small Italian flag. Rotelli tires on the back as well, and the World Grand Prix logo text on his spoiler. So a fairly simple design. He's actually pretty light. There isn't too much metal to him, unfortunately. It really is just this red and white portion right here. Very, very nice though. It just Kind of gets repetitive to see him all of the time on the pegs. And it's very interesting here to note that rivet, rivet screw. So if you wanted to, you could take apart the back portion of Francesco. But I would assume you'd probably want to undo the rivet somehow as well. I do not know how to do any of that stuff. So don't ask me how to do that. And now let's check out a few other variations of Francesco that are the same exact paint job, but just have different expressions or accessories. Here we have most likely my least favorite version of Francesco Bernoulli. Ciao, Francesco Bernoulli. He appeared at the Tokyo party in Cars 2 when he first met Lightning McQueen and he was on that stage, but he wasn't shown with this all in all can that comes with Ciao, Francesco Bernoulli. He was actually shown with a martini glass containing some sort of green fluid. So that is one reason why I do not like this version of Francesco. It's basically the same all in all can as the one that comes with Sal Macchiani and Sean Crash. Just so you guys know. He does have a little bit different expression than the original version of Francesco. He looks a lot more upset and disgusted. And the big difference, which is why he is called Chow Francesco, is the fact that on the back, it says Chow Lightning McQueen because he's talking to McQueen, essentially trash talking him, and then says, this is what you'll see on the racetrack, the behind of Francesco Bernoulli that says, Ciao, LT McQueen. Another inaccurate thing about Francesco here. In the movie, it just says McQueen. There isn't an LT in the movie on Francesco's bumper. So I don't know why Mattel felt the need to cram in an LT there where they could have just put McQueen. So that's very, very unfortunate. And it's even more unfortunate that this release was actually a super chase in 2014. As you can see, Ciao Francesco Bernoulli, Ciao, and it had the all in all can there. Very, very unfortunate in my opinion. A waste of a super chase. One of the worst years actually for super chases. Probably the worst, at least in my opinion. I didn't really like that year at all. And that's really all for Ciao Francesco. Virtually the same as the original version. So. Nothing to say more about him. Now let's move on to interview Francesco Bernoulli. 
another kind of boring release in my opinion. It was in the last case of 2014 in the Mel Dorado show. This is when Francesco was getting all mad and upset during the interview when McQueen was trash talking him. A lot of trash talking going on in this movie between Francesco and McQueen. But as you can see, Mel Dorado show series you can see a few other of the releases in that series. And this is so gosh darn similar to the original. The only difference is the fact that he's shouting now. He's got his mouth open and his eyes are positioned in a way that make him look angry. So that's all for interview Francesco Bernoulli. Very, very similar like I said. Now let's move on to the metallic version of Mr. Bernoulli. I actually really do like this version of Francesco. I just really do like the color on him. It reminds me of like Christmas colors because the red is just very, very glaring and you can see the green on him as well. So it does remind me of Christmas colors. If you do celebrate Christmas, that is. Here's the original version of Francesco. The only difference is that the red on his main body here, the middle section, is now metallicalized. I don't think that's a word, but RT Cars 5 has now made it a word, metallicalized. So, yeah, very, very nice. This was a Toys R Us release, an exclusive actually. A pretty nice one. Pretty, pretty nice. I wish Toys R Us, or Mattel, I should say, released more of the metallic racers. They did about half of them and then just called it quits. And stop that Raul Sarul. Unfortunately, Raul Sarul never made it to America. He was only released internationally. But that is a story for a different video. Here we have the Collect and Connect version of Francesco Bernoulli. This version is probably unknown to a lot of you out there. It was included in a puzzle titled Collect and Connect. It came with a bunch of puzzle pieces, and in the corner, you actually got an exclusive car. These were found at CVS stores and Toys R Us stores, I do believe. And the only difference is that he has some silver detailing, which is actually quite nice. You can see that his front fenders there, which he doesn't really have fenders. I guess you could just say this is a wheel protector up here. Instead of being white, it's now silver. Also on the side... He has a lot more silver detailing. Also, the entire base is silver. So there are quite a few differences between the two of them. The rims are silver. And I really do like this version because there are just some nice upgrades to them, I guess you could say. You can see that the middle portion of the spoiler is silver. And the stripes between the red and the green. So that's a nice version of him. I don't think he's too hard to get nowadays. The Collect and Connect version of McQueen, he is pretty hard to get though, but I don't think he is that hard to find. And now since we're talking about silver, let's move on to the Silver Racer version of Francesco Bernoulli. He was originally released in 2012 as a part of one of the Kmart Collectors events. And in 2015, he was re-released in the Walmart Silver Racers series. I was very surprised when I saw that all the Silver Racers were getting re-released last year. I always thought that these were exclusive to Kmart, but I guess not since Kmart doesn't even do the collector's events for Disney cars anymore. Very, very unfortunate. I wonder if they'll stop doing the Hot Wheels events as well. Now this is also very similar to the original version of Francesco, just having the main middle portion of him being silver and the front wheel protectors. That's really all for Francesco here with the nice silver finish. I mean there are a few more silver details to him that kind of match the other version that I showed just a couple moments ago that was with the puzzle. As you can see, this one has some silver detailing that matches the silver detailing on the silver version of Francesco, the completely silver one. But, you know, you can see a few differences like that detail right there. FR all in all is not on the Walmart, Kmart version of silver Francesco, but all in all the decals are the same. Very, very nice. I have to say these three versions of him, well, at least the two silver ones are pretty cool. 
I like the fact that the silver is not the same on all of them. I mean, the spoiler on Francesco here is silverized a little bit on the Collect and Connect one, but on the Walmart Kmart one, it's the same as the original release. So it's just kind of interesting you compare the two of them and see the differences and similarities. Now, if you guys don't know, the Transcontinental Race of Champions is a series containing a bunch of different races that the World Grand Prix racers take part in. The first one being the Silver Race, I would assume, although when they were originally released in 2012, they were not under the title Transcontinental Race of Champions until the 2015 release. The Neon Race was also a part of this Transcontinental Race of Champions. Then we have the Ice Racers Cup here, then the Carbon Cup, and then the Carnival Cup. So there have been quite a few races a part of this T-Rock League. I do not know if there will be any in the future. I feel like one would be nice. I don't think they'll do two more. I'm not really sure though. Each racer tends to host one of these races. So they probably will do one for Miguel Camino, Francesco Bernoulli, Jeff Corvette, Lewis Hamilton, Nigel Gearsley, or someone that has not hosted a race so far. So here we have the Ice Racer version of Francesco Bernoulli. He was released in a four pack at the beginning of 2015. He was supposed to be released as a single just a little later on, but it never really hit stores. I mean, did you ever find a single version of Francesco Bernoulli as an ice racer? I kind of doubt it. I know a few people found them at Toys R Us or Tuesday morning, but I personally bought mine off Amazon for $5 as an add-on item a couple months ago. So this is the rarest ice racer single. I do believe it is. Don't really think anyone can argue about that because you can most likely go into a Walmart nowadays or at least my local Walmarts and find nearly every ice racer just sitting on the pegs, but don't really think you can find Francesco. Now let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of regular World Grand Prix Francesco to the Ice Racer Francesco. As you can see, there are a lot of changes, one of which being the wheel protectors. They are now completely blue rather than being white and green before. Also, throughout the entire body of Francesco, you can see all the snow detailing. It really brings to life the Ice Race. You can just imagine how snowy it must have been during this race because his tires are black, but you can barely see the black tires. They are covered with snow, really just entirely covered. You can just barely see the Rotelli text on the side of the tires there. His rims are now blue. They are supposed to represent snowflakes, which is very, very nice. On the side here, you can see the Ice Cup logo in Russian because this race takes place in Moscow, hosted by Vitaly Petrov, the Russian racer. He has his FR logo there. Now, the thing about these transcontinental race of champion racers is that from the ice race to present, they do not have any more all-in-all -all or World Grand Prix decals, anything related to the World Grand Prix or all in all is now stripped off because they're not in that race anymore. All in all died because it was created by Miles Axrock and the Lemons, so it makes sense. Unfortunately though, the Silver Racers and the Neon Racers still have those World Grand Prix and all in all decals. Now back to Ice Racer Francesco. He does not have any sort of logo on his spoiler compared to the original having the World Grand Prix text on the logo. You can also see there is a little bit more blue detailing along the sides, whereas on the original it is just white. On the side of Francesco's face or helmet, whatever you want to call it, he has the Italian flag with FB1, obviously standing for Francesco Bernoulli 1. On the side of the square, you can obviously see the number one, which is his racing number, of course. 
A very, very nice racer. This might be my favorite version of Francesco. Not entirely sure yet. It really comes down to a three-way tie between Carbon, Carnival, and Ice Racer, even though the Carbon one hasn't been released yet. Now, you might have seen in the background there, all the way back here, we have the Disney Store version of Ice Racer Francesco. It's actually a metallic one with rubber tires. I did do a review of this quite a long time ago. Link will be in the description below if you want to see that video. And I just wanted to point out one small difference is that he has this logo on his spoiler. Kind of talking about the ice cup in Russian there. Whereas on the Mattel one, it is completely empty. So I thought it was necessary to just show that detail right there. Because, you know, there are some pretty major, not major, but notable differences between the Mattel and Disney Store releases. So now, finishing off with the Ice Racer version, we'll move on to the Carnival Racer version of Francesco Bernoulli. This one was released earlier this year. They are exclusive to target the entire Carnival line. I really do hope the second wave shows up in the USA soon. Like I said earlier, it has so far only been found in Australia. It's a nice series, although I do prefer the Ice Racers and the Carbon Racers. However, some of the Carnival Racers are very, very nice. For example, Francesco Bernoulli here is actually one of my favorites. When I first saw him, though, I did not like the colored tires at all. As you can see on him, they are green. They just look very, very strange to me, but now... I think it's very, very fitting for the carnival race that takes place in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, which also happens to be the host of the 31st Olympian, aka the 2016 Summer Olympics. Have you guys been watching the Olympics? I've been watching some of them. The volleyball, swimming, you know, whatever is on, you know, it's kind of nice to watch. I was actually just watching the interview of Ryan Lochte, the swimmer, and how he lied. Not a fan of that, but uh, I don't know why he lied. He really got himself into some serious trouble, so oh well. <laughs> Not good to be him right now. But So getting back on topic here, besides the green tires, he has the Carnival Cup logo right there and the Transcontinental Race of Champions logo beneath it. We can see Bernoulli, number one. That type of logo is on all of the Carnival Racers, but it is specific to each racer, obviously. Up here, we can see the Italian flag, along with FB, Francesco Bernoulli's initials. There is his signature, along with a very, very small Italian flag on the spoiler. He has some glitter designs. I really do like this feature. It's on most of the Carnival Racers. I do believe they have this glitter feature along with the foil reflective designs. I'm not really sure how to describe it to you guys, but you can just see that this shiny kind of more of a foil like decal on these racers here with the one and around the Carnival Cup text there. I'm probably sounding like an idiot because I don't know how to describe it, but I really do like it. It's on all of the racers, I do believe. Here's the back. Just a few color differences as you can see there. And that's really all. You can just kind of spot out some other color differences on him. On the hood, you can just see that foil reflective design I was talking about. So that's all for my review of the variations of Francesco Bernoulli. I hope you guys enjoyed this review and let me know in the comment section below what version of Francesco is your favorite. I think my favorite is the Ice Racer version, but maybe when the Carbon Racer Francesco is released, he'll be my favorite. It's kind of hard to tell from just pictures on the internet, so I'm not really sure yet. So let me know in the comment section below what your opinion is. And Abigail Mater, once again, thank you for the suggestion. I appreciate it. I hope the video lived up to what you'd hoped it'd be. I just want to give a little bit of an apology if this review is lacking in some areas. I am feeling sick once again because I was sick yesterday 
I'm still a little sick and it's getting late, having a little bit of trouble recording this video, but all's good. You're watching this video. It came out. It worked out, right? So yeah, I'll see you guys on Tuesday for another review. I'm not really sure what it will be. Probably related to the Precision Series though. It's about time for another Precision Series video. So I'll see you guys then. Bye.